Okay. Awesome. So thank you again, everyone, for joining me on this Monday morning um, as we present the Washington WEIM Greenhouse Gas Enhancements Webinar Training. Um, my name is Dottie Vance, and I'm going to be taking you through today's session. With me on the call, we have Monica, who I'll refer to as Mo. Um, she's going to be monitoring the chat, watching for background noises, and just making sure that we run smoothly today. I'm also joined virtually by some of my colleagues. Um, so we have designated Q&A portions of this call, so they may speak up and add their point of view to provide any clarity as we discuss this topic. Also, in an effort to increase transparency and provide greater services to our stakeholders, we are recording this webinar. It's going to be posted on our website so you can review it in the future, and maybe for those who are not able to join today's call. After the training is complete, the recording of this training is going to be posted to our Learning Center. We currently have the slides posted up on our Learning Center. Mo has posted that link in the chat, so if you would like to follow along with these slides, you can have them up on your own as well. So with that being said, let's go over some housekeeping together. So just a few things as we progress through this training, I'm going to have those designated stopping points for question and answer. Um, any questions you ask, I'll be documenting, and I'll update this training accordingly depending on what we discussed today. Um, so there's a few options for how you can ask your question today. You can either raise your hand virtually, and this will alert the team that you have a question or possibly a comment. You can also enter those questions or comments in the chat box feature of WebEx. I really encourage you guys to ask your questions today. We have SMEs on the call. We'll take it back if we don't have the answer necessarily and just get all this information to you this morning. So with that being said, I want to jump into the agenda. So what are we talking about today, specifically as it relates to this enhancement? So in this training, I'm going to talk about the Washington WEIM GHG history, where we're going currently with that timeline. I'm going to walk through those application-specific details, so what's getting impacted, what does this look like for you, and then just to make sure we're all aware of the understanding of that readiness activity, so that unstructured market sim. So let's jump in. We've laid the groundwork. We were all here for this. Let's, let's talk about that background, that high-level review of the changes. So just to give some context for folks, so starting in 2013, some of the California's thermal generating resources became subject to a greenhouse gas, that GHG allowance cap and trade system that was run by CARB. You'll see a few years later in 2023 that Washington implemented a very similar program which has led us to that May of 2023, you see that the ISO has implemented that interim solution. I also want to point out here that the Washington Greenhouse Gas EIM Enhancement Project is something that allows scheduling coordinators for resources with that compliance obligation under the Washington's Cap and Invest Program to reflect those GHG costs in their bids. And now we're all the way in fall 23, which is crazy that the year has gone so quickly where we're implementing that full WAGHG project. Just to provide some more context, so I wanted to provide a slide from that interim alternative approach that was effective May 1st. So because the full project functionality was not quite ready, the ISO implemented this alternative solution. Um, the solution leveraged existing Kaizo market software, so it could be implemented a little bit sooner. And the end result was that same thing with the increased default energy bids and the commitment costs. I also want to point out here, so I have a few things linked. I have that notice request that was sent out for this initiative when it was pushed, and I have both PRRs that are attached to this, so that's 1507 and 1506 um, that you can go back and look at your leisure. And this brings us on to that implementation timeline. So now we're moving forward. So we have the interim solution that went into place in May of 2023. Today we're on this call for that external training on August 28th. Coming just around the corner, September is knocking on the door. We have September 7th through the 29th, that unstructured market sim. So this just means it's one where the ISO doesn't have any, we don't, it's nothing too fancy. There's no scenarios for you, meaning there's no settlements or manipulation of the market that has to happen. So it's that unstructured. And then we go into production, which is going to be November 1st. I also have linked on this slide the policy initiative page. So if you wanted to go back and look at what has been discussed for this enhancement, you can do that too. So before I go forward and talk about those application specific details that are changing, I wanted to pause to see if folks have any questions about what was just discussed. 
So Mo, I'll pass it to you to see if there's any hands raised or if there's any questions in the chat. Thank you, Dottie. I'm scanning for any hands raised. I don't see any at this time. I'm also looking in the chat box and there are no questions at this time. Back to you, Dottie. Um, sorry, this is this is Russa um, Kanini from Bonneville, and I do have a question. You had mentioned that there was not going to be kind of this structured market stem. You said there were no settlements. Does that mean there will be no settlement statements issued as part of that um, map stage work? That is a fantastic question. Um, I want to take that back to our market sim folks, um, just to answer to that. Or if there's any SMEs on the call that could speak to that statement. Hi, this is Train. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, that's a great question, and we will have settlement statements in the market simulation environment publishing for the month of September. So there's a settlement calendar that's published, but there are no direct settlements impact for GHG um, initiative. But if you want to review settlements uh, for any other reason, then um, those will be available in publishing. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Chang. I really appreciate that. Dottie, I don't see any uh, further questions. Back to you. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mel. So now let's get into the meat of it. So the specific details that are going to be associated with this initiative. So this slide here, I just pulled from the market simulation page, and I just wanted to highlight, we're gonna be talking about CMRI, changes that are happening, changes in OASIS, master file, and then cyber. I've also, it's already come to my attention, so I have linked here at the market simulation plan. That link is broken, so when I upload this presentation again, I'll be sure to have that correct link so you can open up that presentation to look at as well. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump right in and we can first tackle master file. So what's changing with master file? What do you need to know? So previously for master file, you would see on the resource tab, you would see two um, columns. You would see the greenhouse gas emission rate, and then you would see the greenhouse gas compliance obligation. I wanna point out that previously by default, these rates would refer only to California, and that we are removing these two columns and they're going to this new attribute called the GHG emission rate, um, which I'll talk about in this next slide. So new changes to master file, I mentioned already that new attribute, the GHG emission rate, and then we have a new column added to this as well, referred to as state. Um, so you'll see here GHG emission rate, we have the resource ID, we have that new state column, the GHG emission rate and the GHG compliance obligation, those two items I talked about previously um, are now going to be under here as well. Um, if you want a little bit more information about what exactly that means, the resource ID is that identifier of the resource, um, the state is going to be the options between California and Washington. Um, it's important to note that the emission state may differ from the resource's physical location. Um, we have the GHG emission rate, so applicable to the compliance obligation, and then that GHG compliance obligation, that yes or no. I wanna point out that resources will have to register their unit to include the GHG cost, and will have a rate, they could potentially have a rate for California or Washington. Um, I also want to point out that um, it's going to have changes in the market instruments attachment K and energy imbalance market BPM. Um, I currently have those PRRs listed, so the 1534, 1535, and then I wanted to call attention to the tech specs that were also posted um, that you could look back at at your leisure as well. So those are some of the changes happening to master file. I'm going to pause here and see if folks have any questions. So I'll pass it over to you, Mo, um, to see if we have anything based off those changes. Dottie, again, I'm gonna scan for any hands raised. Um, please feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to uh, ask your question, or if you'd like to enter your question into the chat. Just gonna give it a minute to see if anyone has any questions. Dottie, I don't see any hands raised or any questions in the chat. Um, 
There is one thing that um, one of our SMEs would like to just uh, emphasize is that it is a new tab on the GRDT um, spreadsheet. So. Perfect. Uh, Thank you that. so much, Mo. And Thank I'll you, be sure to include include that comment um, when I re-upload this training deck as well. So I appreciate that. Okay, so we just paused and talked about the changes that are happening in master file. Um, so the GHG emission rate and then that new column of state. Um, let's look at what's happening with CMRI for you guys. So I wanna point out that in CMRI, there's no user interface changes. It's gonna be more of a calculation change. Specifically to the default energy bid curves report and the default commitment costs report. So to break down that calculation for you guys, currently the calculation takes things into effect like the operations and maintenance, fuel costs, and as we implement this, it's going to take into effect that Washington State greenhouse gas compliance obligation. Um, who will this impact? There's a specific um, part of group of people. So it's gonna be the WEIM entities, and they have to have resources in Washington, and they have to have that compliance obligation for greenhouse gas. So there is a calculation change, but it's very specific for who this is going to be impacting. Just to lay down a little bit more, I wanted to provide some examples of when would this calculation impact a resource? So the first example is the resource is located inside of Washington, and it clearly has an obligation for the greenhouse gas. So that means that calculation will be impacted. The next example I have for you guys is the resources located inside Washington. So we have that checked off. However, it's, for example, a hydro resource. So it doesn't have that compliance obligation for greenhouse gas. So that means it will not be impacted by this new calculation. And then finally, we have another resource. Let's say it's located somewhere in Nevada. Um, it will also not be impacted by this new calculation. So again, it's going to be a very specific set of groups that will impact this calculation change, and folks will see a slightly higher number, which I'll demonstrate here in the next couple slides. So we discussed the calculation and who's it's impacting. Let's look at those reports that I mentioned earlier on. So the first one we'll look at is the default energy bid curves, and I have it linked here that's located on CMRI. So you'll click that, and then I'll bring you to a page that looks something like this. Again, there's going to be no UI changes. It'll be that calculation change on the back end, and it's gonna be reflected in the BPM when we have that. I have linked in the presentation those PRR numbers. Um, if you keep going, I wanted to provide an example of the calculation. So this specific calculation I pulled from the BPM is for a gas-fired unit. Um, so it breaks down, you see highlighted in orange that GHG cost that is added. If you're someone who wanted to get maybe more in the weeds about this calculation itself, in the reference section, I have numbers and I play it out for you to see what that might look like. Um, so I just wanted to include it here. And if you wanted to dig deeper, I have that example played out in the reference section as well. Additionally, let's look at that default commitment cost. So we just looked at the default energy bids curve. So now we wanna look at that default commitment cost as well. So you'll go to CMRI, default bids, default commitment costs. When you get there, it's gonna look something like this. So we see the minimum load cost, the startup cost, and the transition cost as you go through. And I wanted to call attention to just a few things here. So I pulled that startup cost. Um, so this is that calculation that would be impacted by the GHG compliance obligation. If that resource is impacted, this is what it would look like. So I have highlighted in orange the GHG emission rates and the GHG allowance. Again, if you're someone who's like, I wanna get more in the weeds and I wanna see this played out with numbers, I provided an example in the references for you to look back at and see what that would look like. Additionally, for another calculation I wanted to show you guys today is that proxy minimum load cost that would include a GHG compliance obligation. Again, if that resource met that criteria. So I have highlighted here that GHG allowance price. And similar to the other two examples that I just highlighted, if you're someone who wants to see the numbers, wants to see what that would look like played out, in our reference section of today's presentation, I have included that for you as well. So again, I wanted to stop here. Um, after each change, I kind of want to give do a pulse check to see if folks have questions. Um, and I'll pass it over to you, Mo. Again, if you have a question, 
please feel free to raise your hand or enter it in the chat and we'll call on you. Thank you, Dottie. Um, scanning for questions, I'm scanning for hands raised. Um, I don't see any hands raised at this time. I'm also looking in the chat. I don't see anything in the chat. Again, if you'd like to add any questions, feel free to add to the chat or raise your hand. I do see one um, hand raised from Chen Yu, I believe. If your hand is raised, you can come off mute and ask that question. Hi, darling. Yeah, thank you. This is Chen Yu from PGNE. Can you go back to the previous two slides? My yes. question is, um, so in this market simulation, if we, is it a specific trade day? We actually, even it's unstructured, right? Can we, are you going to run the market and at least simulate um, one of these changes so we can go in and take a look at it? I mean, we may not be able to see it. Of course, the, the calculation is behind the scene, but it's any specific trade day we can go in and we can pull out the report and just take a look at that. That is a very good question. Thank you so much for asking it. I am going to see if any of my SMEs on the call may be, in, may be able to answer that question currently. And if not, I will take that back and include that in the presentation um, so you have that answer. All right, thank you. And I, I think I have another question is that when we look at this report, how can we differentiate? So we'll see, um, I'm, I'm trying to see the, the two columns that, uh, that it's blurred. Where, I mean, from our standpoint, pg and &E standpoint, we see uh, PCG2, we shouldn't see any change um, on this. However, I just want to know how the orange, right, the GHG allowance price, that's impacting us. Knowing we already complying with the GHG, but I just wonder this change because the calculation, how does it, how can we differentiate whether this, this uh, new component um, as part of the calculation um, how does how does it impacting us? I'm not sure that makes sense. I I believe I'm understanding what you're saying, and I have this to me on the call. Um, Kevin, if he can come off mute and answer, um, I'll give him a chance to respond back to you. Yeah. Hey. Uh, thanks, everybody. This is Kevin Head. I'm in the market analysis group at the ISO. Uh, so. Thanks, thanks for the questions. Um, for your first question for the market simulation, the, you know, once this functionality is activated in, in the map stage environment, the market will be running with, you know, the updated formulas for the calculation of default energy bids and default commitment costs. Um, so, in theory, every day of the market simulation, you'll be able to check the results. Um, but again, it, it's really only going to impact resources that are located in in Washington or subject to Washington's Cap and Invest program. So it shouldn't have any impact to PG&E. Um, the second question would be, you know, how can you verify that this formula is not impacting your resources, um, you, you could use this formula to recreate, you know, your minimum load cost and check that it's not impacting your resources. But again, it, it really shouldn't impact any resources that are located in California because this is really just specific to resources that have a compliance obligation under Washington's program. Thank you, Kevin. Helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's very helpful. Thanks. Thanks. 
Sadia, I don't see any other questions. Um, no other questions in the chat either. Back to you, Dottie. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank you for those questions and for Kevin for speaking. Um, so we did just talk about the changes that are happening in CMRI. So those calculation changes that are specific to the WEIM entities inside of Washington with that GHG compliance obligation. Um, so now let's look at what's happening with cyber for you guys. So cyber functionality is remaining the same. I wanted to include this just so we're all on the same page with it. So scheduling coordinators will submit the costs in their bids in cyber. They're going to notice a slightly higher bid cap in cyber for that Washington GHG compliance. Um, additionally, I wanted to call out that there's no UI or API changes happening in cyber. The data is just consuming those Washington GHG adders. So those are the changes to cyber. It's a smaller section. Um, so I'll go on and talk about Oasis. If you do have questions for cyber, um, please feel free to ask that during that next Q&A period. Um, so now let's talk about Oasis. So what changes are happening and what are you going to be seeing? Um, so you'll be seeing a few things. So there's going to be a new column added to a report, specifically that greenhouse gas, greenhouse, greenhouse gas allowance index price report, and there'll be a calculation change, which I'll provide an example here in a moment. So to get to it, you go to Oasis, prices, index prices, and then that greenhouse gas allowance index price. From there, this is what that current view will look like for you. So you'll see the trade date and the GHG index price. Um, originally, this was just used for California, but once this project is implemented, the Washington um, price will also be included for that Washington um, with that state column, which I, I can show you right here on this next slide. Um, so you see that state column is added between trade date and the GHG index price. Um, you'll see the separation between California and Washington. I also want to point out that this report is updated between 21 and 2200 for the next day. Um, so that's when you'll see it be updated. So as far as the calculation changes, so in regard to those numbers, um, resources are subjected to the greenhouse gas regulations in California or Washington are responsible for submitting allowances for their emissions. So index prices representing average trading prices are published by commercial providers each day. The index price used by the ISO for calculations is known as that greenhouse gas allowance price and will be the average of the two providers. So who the ISO uses is the Intercontinental Exchange End of Day Report, also known as ICE. And then they also use Argus Air Daily. Um, so we take the two numbers. So ICE, for example, would give us a number for California and a number for Washington. And Argus would do the same thing. We would take those numbers and average it, and that would give us that California price and that Washington price. So this next slide is just that example of what this would look like. So let's say, for example, Argus gives us a $32 price for California, and ICE gives us a $33 uh, price for California. And then we see Argus gives us a 56 for Washington, and ICE will give us a 58. The ISO will take those numbers and find the average between the two, and so we'll see 3250 for that California price, and then for Washington would be that 57 between those two averages. So that's how that um, price changing is going to look for you guys. So those are the changes happening in Oasis. Again, it's that column being added to, differ to differentiate the state and then that calculation. So I'll pause here and see if folks have questions before we talk about readiness activities. So I'll pass it over to you, Mo, to see if there's any hands raised or any questions in the chat. As of this minute, I don't see any hand raised and I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay, thank you so much, Mo. Okay, so now we've covered all the application specific um, things that are related to this initiative. I wanna talk about the readiness activity. So what's going to be happening after this external training? So we do have that unstructured market simulation. It'll be on September 7th. I've linked a few things here for you guys. So we have the ISO public calendar for that full schedule. Uh, additionally, if you have specific questions related to market simulation, I've included that email so you can submit a city ticket um, and it shows you on the screen exactly what that would look like when you're submitting one. Um, but that's mainly the, what's going to be happening after this training. Additionally, after this training, I'll update the slides with some of the comments that were brought up 
um, on this training. And if we have any more questions here at the end, I'll update the slides as well, um, just so you all have that information. So once again, I'm gonna pause here to see if folks have questions about readiness activities or about what's, what is changing with the Washington GHG. Um, and we'll pause here for questions. I'll throw it back over to you, Mo. Thank you, Dottie. Um, I'm, I don't see any questions in the chat right now, but I'm also scanning to see if we have any hands raised. I'm not seeing any as of this, but actually there's one question from Ann Ferguson. Ann, please go ahead and uh, ask your question. Yeah, I just wanna confirm when you create the new tab in the master file, we're in California and we have resources that do, do have a GHG obligation. Are you gonna transfer that information that's currently on the resource tab over to the new field or do we have to physically do something? Uh, hi, uh, this is Jay from uh, the model uh, and contract implementation group. So uh, existing data for California will be transferred over to the new tab. So you don't need to enter them. They will, they will be moved over. Great, I just wanted to confirm. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. If anybody else would like to ask a question, please feel free to raise your hand. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please ask your question. This is uh, Alvis Kubota, also from PG&E. Um, I was curious about, um, and I may be off base on this, but I thought there was a, a calculation of um, a, a, an emission rate that was applied to imports to California and perhaps then to Washington as well. And does this initiative impact that calculation in any way? There is no impact um, in any way to that for this initiative. Okay. Thank you. Of course, thank you for asking. Buddy, I don't see any additional hands um, raised and I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, back to you, Dottie. Okay, thank you again for those questions. So in summary, that's going to be what we were talking about today for the Washington GHG um, enhancements. As I mentioned, um, after this, presentation, we have it recorded, so I'll upload it to the Learning Center. Currently, the slides are already on the Learning Center, so you can access them there. They're also in the chat. Um, shortly after this presentation, you'll be receiving an email request to complete a training evaluation on today's session. If you could please take a moment to complete the survey, it allows us to create a better and more effective training for you in the future. Additionally, if you have any questions about the presentation um, that was presented here, you can always submit that city ticket and reach out to customer readiness at kaiso.com. I've really enjoyed presenting to you guys today and I hope you have a great rest of your Monday.